What's up guys, it's Ivan Taxorus and welcome to the build guide of the $1,000 Ryzen gaming PC. If you guys wanna check out the benchmarks, make sure to watch that video first. So the build guide will include the step-by-step -step installation of everything you see on this desk, also Windows, uh, installing drivers, and even overclocking the CPU and the graphics card. So it's gonna be a full in-depth build guide. It's okay if you guys don't have the exact same parts as I do. Maybe you have a different graphics card, CPU, or motherboard. The process of building the PC is very similar, so this build guide will help you build your PC as well. So the purpose of this build is not only to make a good looking and balanced gaming and streaming PC, but also make it a lot easy to upgrade in the future. With this configuration, you're able to max out any game in 1080p over 60 FPS. And once again, make sure to check out the benchmarks down below. All right guys, the only tool you will need to build yourself your PC is a screwdriver. I'm gonna be using the Fantex Toolkit, which pretty much comes with everything you need to build or fix a PC. And one of the things I really like about this is this portion over here, which is bendable, you can attach it to the tip here and you can get into really tight places between the motherboard to tighten screws and it's magnetic. So that is why I love using this toolkit. I'll drop a link below if you guys wanna check it out. Things like 20 or 25 bucks, but just a screwdriver will be fine. All right, so the parts you'll need for now are your motherboard, your RAM sticks, the CPU and the CPU cooler if you're using a different cooler. And if you guys are using an M.2, uh, drive, make sure you guys take that out as well. You don't necessarily need the case just yet, um, just these parts. So go ahead and take out the motherboard from the box. What you wanna do is hold on to the box itself, gently take out the sleeve, and then you're gonna place the motherboard on top of the motherboard box. But actually, before you do that, I'm gonna put it on here just for now. You're gonna take out the IO shield from the motherboard box and your SATA cables. Also, some motherboards come with a tiny screw for the M.2, so if you guys are using an M.2 SSD, you will need the M.2 screw for that. That way you can lock it in place. All right, so once everything is taken out of the box, make sure you guys close it and gently put the motherboard on top of the box. Every time you're grabbing the motherboard, guys, make sure you're grabbing it from the sides. Do not touch any of the components on the top or behind it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is pop in the CPU. We're using a 2600X here. All CPUs are the same. There's gonna be a tiny gold triangle in the corner, so make sure you guys locate that. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna match the gold triangle to the triangle on the CPU socket itself. So once you find that out, you're gonna push down on the lever, bring it out and open it up, and then gently lower the CPU on its socket. Do not apply any force and do not touch the surface of the CPU. So once it's fully seated, all you have to do is lower down the lever and then it locks in place. All right, next we're gonna install your RAM sticks. Depending on how many RAM sticks you have, there's a certain order you have to install them on your motherboard especially if you have four slots and only two RAM sticks. If you have only two slots, just put both of the RAM sticks in your slots. The best way to figure out where to install your RAM sticks if you have four slots is by looking at the diagram on the motherboard. Over here it says the first slots to occupy are A2 and B2. So A2 is the first red one and then B2 is the second red one over here. Now, okay, first thing you wanna do is open up the notches and you're gonna gently slide them in one by one. What you wanna do is lower it evenly and then basically press down on it with both of your hands. And then you can hear it snap in place. Basically do the same thing for the other ramp stick. Opposite side. Boom. Once these two notches are fully seated, that means the ramp sticks are uh, locked in. All right, next up, we can install the M.2 SSD. So if you guys have an M.2 SSD, this is how to install it. If you don't, you can skip this part. All right, so we're gonna grab the M.2 by its sides and with the sticker facing the top, we're gonna gently slide it in the slot over here. Just push it in until it snaps in place and then lower this end. Remember the screw I was talking about earlier, guys? That's what this is for. So this tiny screw sits right over here and it's basically gonna keep the M.2 uh, tied down. So get your screwdriver, hold this down while you screw it in place. Just like that. 
Next, we're gonna install the heatsink that came included with the CPU. Now, if you guys are using a third-party cooler, make sure to read the instruction manual and that will tell you how to install that. It's very straightforward, very simple. Now, if you guys are using the same cooler or heatsink as me, this is how you install it. First thing you wanna do is remove all four screws holding these two brackets down. We don't need it for the type of heatsink we're installing. All right, so once both of the brackets are removed, we're essentially going to align the heatsink to match the four holes on the motherboard with the four screws on the heatsink. By the way, guys, you don't need thermal paste because it already comes with pre-applied thermal paste. Uh, there's only one way actually I can install this because I, you need the cable to reach the top CPU fan header on the motherboard. So it's gonna have to be like this. So once you align all four of the screws to the holes on the motherboard, just gently lower it down. Again, guys, don't apply any pressure. Just make sure the screws align with the holes. And just kind of let it sit like that until you make sure all screws are inserted. Afterwards, grab your screwdriver and gently start twisting the screws. Not all the way, just enough. So tighten a little bit and then we're gonna go diagonal to the opposite side, do the same thing. Twist it maybe like three or four times. And then we're gonna go up here, kind of like a crisscross pattern, guys. And then we're gonna go diagonal here. And you just basically rinse and repeat until all four screws are tightened all the way. All right, guys, so after that, you're gonna grab the cable that comes out of the heatsink and you're gonna hook this up to the CPU fan header right on the motherboard, which is usually right there on the top next to the RAM sticks. So make sure you find the right side. So grab it from the tip and then insert it inside. There's only one way it can go in, so obviously if it doesn't go in, flip it the opposite side and insert it. What I like to do to hide the cable is just kind of squeeze it in between the RAM sticks and the cooler so it's not sticking out like that. So something like this would do the trick. It's a lot cleaner than just having it stick out. All right, so now the motherboard is ready to be placed inside the case. But before we do that, we gotta pop in the IO shield real quick. So pop this out of the uh, motherboard box, peel it open, and make sure that the, uh, the circles over here are facing the downward position. So we're gonna position the, the skin portion outwards from the inside. Again, the circles facing down. I wanna try and pop this in. Make sure you guys apply pressure on all four corners evenly to snap in place. This is actually the hardest part of building the PC, believe it or not. There you go. As you guys can see, all four corners are basically pushed out. So that's when you know it's fully seated inside. Now, if your case comes in pre-installed standoffs, then all you have to do is pick up the motherboard and place it inside. Now, if it doesn't come pre-installed with standoffs, you're gonna have to look for them inside the bag of screws, which comes uh, with your case, and then manually install them inside your case. So the way I place the motherboard inside the case is by using one hand on the heatsink and the other hand on the side of the motherboard, just like this. I gently grab it and then gently lower it inside. You're gonna have to tilt it at an angle so you can match the, the IO with the IO shield. So once that's aligned, you can gently lower the motherboard down. At the same time, trying to align the holes uh, from the standoff to the holes on the motherboard. And you guys should hear it snap in place, just like that. All right, so now it's time to secure the motherboard inside the case. So we're gonna be grabbing um, these M3 screws and I'll show you guys close up what, it, what they look like. We're gonna need eight of these screws and here's what it looks like. They're really short screws with a round top. It's the best way to distinguish them amongst the rest. So this is where the screwdriver comes in handy to get in those really tight spaces. And since they're magnetic, I could just put the screw on here. All right, here we go. All right, so this is the last screw. The motherboard is now secured inside the case. The next thing we can do, I guess, is hook up the power supply. 
All right, we're gonna remove the uh, PSG bracket from the back here. So you can loosen up the thumb screws first because usually they come in really tight. And then unscrew them. We're gonna need four of these screws. So they either come in with your power supply or in the bag inside the case. You need four of these. So with the fan facing downwards, we're gonna put the bracket back on top. And while you hold it in place, it's kind of tricky because it's not fully modular. We're gonna screw these in. So starting from the top, Don't tighten it all the way, just enough until it's holding the bracket in place. And then you can move down to the bottom left. All right, so that's in, now you can install the other two. All right, so once the bracket is secured on the back of the power supply, you're gonna grab this set of cables and then grab it from this end. Again, make sure the fan is facing downwards, guys. I'm gonna slide it in just like this. Once it's inside, you have to prop up the power supply just a little bit until you can align the thumb screws with the holes. So once you do that, just start tightening them in. All right, next we're gonna install the storage. So I'll show you guys how to install an SSD as well as a hard drive. This is technically not a real hard drive, but I'm gonna use this as an example and show you guys how to do it. All right, so if you're installing an SSD, you're gonna to have to pop out one of these shields. So I'm just gonna pick this one for now. Remove the thumb screw. So you're gonna take your SSD and you're gonna flip it over, make sure that the connections are facing the opposite direction, just like this. And then you're going to put it on the tray, flip it over, make sure that the holes align and then you're gonna have to screw it in. I'll tell you what screws to use. So these are the screws you're gonna need. They look very similar to the motherboard screws. They're very short and then they have a round top. Um, you can use four, but I only use two for all my SSDs because that's all you really need to keep it secured. So once you align the holes uh, on the SSD tray, just screw them in. I usually do one on one corner and then the other one on the opposite corner and that should be enough to secure it in place. There you go, just like that. Now, before you put the SSD back inside the case, I strongly recommend hooking up the cables first because once you have it secured back there, it's gonna be really difficult to reach in the back and plug these in. So, this is the SATA cable you would need, guys. There's two types. There's one with two flat ends, and then there's one with an L shape. You guys do not wanna use this one for this particular case. This is the one we're gonna be using. You're gonna flip it over with the clip facing down and snap it in place, just like this. Now the other cable you're gonna need comes out of the power supply and it looks like this. And this is what provides power to the SSD and the hard drive. So it looks like this, you can pick any end you want. Again, the concept is the same. So grab one end and then just slide it in just like this. Make sure it's fully seated and there's no gap between the SSD and the connector. This, both of these cables go in only one way, guys. So if it doesn't connect, flip it over and try it again, just like this. So now we're gonna do is flip over the case. And now that we know which cable to use, we're gonna disconnect the power cable, which is this one. And we're gonna drag it from the back through the front, just like this, so we have access. And then we're gonna grab the SSD, slide in the other cable. And then hook this one up where it belongs. This, one's the, this is the tricky part, guys. There you go, it's connected. So we're gonna flip this over and then slide it back on the tray, just like this. It should snap in place so it doesn't move, and then you guys can put back the thumb screw. So that's how you install your SSD. 
So the hard drive gets installed on the back of your case. So flip it around and with the sticker facing the top and the connection facing outwards, you're basically gonna just slide it in this portion right over here. It's very simple. The hard drives are really wide, so it's gonna slide in very easily. So similar to the SSD, it uses the exact same connections, guys. It uses one SATA cable and one uh, data cable. Both of them get plugged in the back, and all you guys have to do is slide it in over here and screw it from the sides here. There's a screw hole on the side here, and there's a screw hole on the other side, which you can access by popping this off. Once you pop that off, and then you take off the dust shield, you guys can see here, there's a screw hole right there which will align with the hard drive. So once the hard drive's aligned, all you have to do is screw it in and that's it, you're good to go. I just wish I had a hard drive to show you guys the actual example. Now the other end of the SATA cable actually plugs into your motherboard and I'll show you guys where exactly. So from the back, you can route it any way you want. I'll show you guys how to cable manage at the end. But the idea is to all right guys, so the other end of the uh, SATA cable that's plugged into your SSD or hard drive gets connected to your motherboard. So these are the SATA ports and I typically plug it in the top one, but you guys can choose whichever one you want. Just flip it on its side and then insert it. Again, if it doesn't go in, flip it over to the other side and push it in until it snaps, just like that. All right guys, we're almost done. Now it's time to install the cables, which is the fun part. Uh, we're gonna do this step by step. Make sure you guys are paying very close attention because this part can get really tricky. Now, if you guys are using, using extensions, just like I am, this is the process for that. If you're not, then you're gonna skip this part. First cable we're gonna grab is the big cable, the 24 pin. It says 20 on here plus 4P. This is to power the motherboard. And we're gonna hook up the extension for that. So grab the female portion of the cable and then snap it in place, just like this. Make sure both of these cables are aligned, guys, before you snap it in place. Just like that. And make sure the clip goes over, just like that. It's gotta sit flush. The next cable we're gonna grab is for the CPU. And the way you know that is because it's labeled on their CPU. Both of the four pins we're gonna use and then for the extension, it's gonna be this one over here. Once again, grab the female portion, align them together, snap it in place, just like that. All right, so the graphics card we're gonna use only uses a single six pin, as you guys can see. Just look at the graphics card, and on the side here, you can tell how many connectors it's gonna use. So for our case, it's using only a six pin. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a six pin cable, and this one is labeled PCIe. This is for your graphics card. And since it's only using a single six pin, we're only gonna use this portion of it. So once again, we're gonna grab the extension, the female portion, and snap this in place. That's it. That's the only cable we're gonna use for our graphics card. If you did everything correctly, you should have three extension cables hooked up. That is all the cables we're gonna use. Everything else does not need an extension. So the first cable we're gonna connect is the giant one, the 24 pin cable. If you guys don't have an extension, this is what it looks like. It says 20 plus and then 4P next to it. This is the cable we're gonna be plugging in the 24 pin socket on the motherboard. So we're gonna go in from the back, making sure the notch on the 24 pin over here matches with this one over here. So we're gonna bend it a little bit, just like this. It's okay to bend it, don't worry and then snap it in place until, we, until you hear a click. You may have to wiggle it a little bit. There you go. Sometimes you won't be able to hear a click, but it will slide in. Now we're gonna do the CPU cable, the one that says CPU on the actual connector itself. We're gonna run it through the back and the easiest way to reach the motherboard is through the top right corner. There's usually a cutout over here, so drag it through here and these two connections go inside the 8 pin the first 8 pin socket right there boom snaps in place that's what it looks like 
All right, the next cable we're gonna hook up is the Molex one. And this is hooked up to both of the fans that come pre-installed with the case, the top fan and the rear fan. And this connects to the other Molex connector from the power supply, which looks like this. So you can grab any end of it and then just hook it up like this until it snaps in place. Just like that. The last cable we're gonna be hooking up is this for the graphics card, but we're gonna hold off till the end because that's the last component we're gonna install. We're gonna be working on these cables. All these cables are connected to the case. These are basically to power the front panel. We're gonna start off with the one with the blue tip. This is to power the USB 3.0 ports on the top of the case. This one connects to the USB 3.0 header on the motherboard, which is right above the SATA cable we just connected for the SSDs. So make sure the notch is aligning with this gap over here. And then bring it close and gently wiggle it inside. You may need to apply some extra force to push it in because it is pretty stubborn. But once it's fully seated, it will look like this. So the next cable is labeled HD audio, and this one connects to the bottom left side of the motherboard. So I like to bring it from the back side over here next to the SSD and hook it up to this pin over here on the motherboard. Make sure that the holes on the connector align with the pins on the motherboard before you insert it in. So just a quick tip for you guys, make sure the HD audio is facing upwards. So it's gonna go like this. As you guys can see, the words are facing the top and it's fully seated inside. And finally, we got these two sets of cables, which are honestly the most annoying and most difficult ones to connect. So make sure you guys are paying close attention. We're gonna be doing the HDD LED first. So make sure you guys grab this and turn it upside down. And with the words facing down, we're gonna plug this on the bottom first two pins. So the first two pins coming from the left side on the bottom. Make sure it's facing down. And then slide it in. It's very simple once you figure it out. As you guys can see, it's sitting on the bottom left corner of that socket. And if you guys want a quick tip, you can look on the top of that pin and there's a quick diagram showing you how to connect those cables. And finally, these are the last set of cables we need to install and they actually come in order. So leave it the way it is guys, P plus, P minus, and then power switch, just the way it is. And all you guys have to do is insert it on the top three pins above the HDD LED. So these three connectors sit right on top of the previous one we just connected. Just like that, plus LED goes first, minus LED comes second, and then the power switch. All right guys, the final component to this entire build is the graphics card. So we need access to the top PCI bracket, which is this one, which means we're gonna have to remove the second and third PCI brackets. So we're gonna have to remove these two screws first. All right, so once this stupid useless bracket is removed, we can <laughs> remove the second and third dumb screw over here. All right, so grab your GPU with the fan facing down. Just slowly bring it close to the top PCI bracket and slide it in place until it snaps, just like that. So while it's in place, make sure you guys tighten the PCI bracket near the back. And also it's always recommended to install your GPU to the top PCI bracket for the best performance. All right guys, so grab the final six pin PCI connector and I'm gonna hook it up to the GPU. So make sure the clip aligns with the notch on the top of the GPU. So it's gonna go like this, snap it in place. And just like that, you finished building your very first PC, but we're only halfway done because we still gotta boot it up, install Windows, install the drivers, and also overclock the CPU and graphics card. So uh, I guess you guys can take this time and work on the cable management. Now that you know where everything connects, you can disconnect the cables and route them any way you want for a much cleaner look. So don't be afraid to use your zip ties and also Velcro straps to tidy up the back of your case. I'm gonna spend some time cable managing this 
and I'll see you guys really soon. All right guys, so I just finished cable managing the PC. This is what it looks like from the back. Uh, to give you guys some tips on cable management, make sure to use Velcro straps or the zip ties that comes with your power supply. Also find a few routes to route the cables. Don't have the cables running down the center. Try and find a discrete uh, pattern or route to run the cables. As you guys can see, some cables that run on the left side and the rest are run on the opposite side. Uh, any excess cables that you guys aren't using, make sure to bundle them together, zip tie it or Velcro it together, and then just push it inside the, uh, the, the next to the hard drive bay down here. The cool thing about this case is that there's plenty of space down here to just uh, hide the cables that you're not gonna be using. And this is what the front looks like, which is the most important part. As you guys can see, very clean, very organized PC from the front. Lots of space uh, for future expandability, like I said earlier. There's an extra space for an SSD, maybe a bigger cooler, or even a radiator to fit in the front. So yeah, plenty of space for expansion later down the line. All right, so once you guys are happy with the cable management, close back the rear panel and tighten the thumb screws in the back. Now it's time to install Windows operating system, and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. All right, so this is how you install Windows. First thing you're gonna need is a USB drive with at least eight gigabytes of space, and make sure it's completely formatted, that there are no files on here because you're gonna have to erase them anyways. Go ahead and plug this to a different PC that has internet access. I'm gonna use the PC that I built as an example, but you're gonna have to access a PC or a laptop that has Wi-Fi and Windows installed already. So we're gonna hook this up to the PC. All right, so you're gonna open up your browser and visit the Microsoft website to download Windows 10 files. I'll drop a link to it down below, that way you guys can just click on it and download the tool. You're gonna to scroll down and click on Create Windows 10 Installation Media. We're gonna click on the Download Tool now. Let Windows download the file, it may take a few minutes. All right, so once the file is downloaded, just click on it and it will open it up. It will take you to the license terms, so make sure you click on Accept. Give it a few seconds and then it will tell you what you want to do. We're gonna click on Create Installation Media, USB flash drive, and then we're gonna click on Next. We're gonna make sure that the architecture and the addition is correct. So in our case, we did have Windows 10 64-bit installed, and then we're gonna click on Next. Over here, we're gonna be selecting the USB flash drive, which should be by default. So then we're gonna click on Next again. And we're gonna be selecting the USB drive. So if you have multiple stuff connected to your PC, make sure to select the correct path for your USB. So in our case, we only have one thing connected, so we're gonna click on Next. And over here, it's gonna download the Windows files and install them to your USB. So this part may take anywhere from five to 30 minutes, depending on your internet speed. So just sit back, relax, and let Windows do its thing. All right, so we're gonna grab the USB drive that has the Windows files installed on and we're gonna hook this up to your PC. And then we're gonna turn on the PC. It should automatically detect the operating system from the USB drive, and it should automatically boot from the USB drive. So it looks like it did detect the USB drive and it's taking you straight to the Windows installation page. Uh, so you're gonna go and click on Next. Click on Install Now. And this is where you would put in your Windows key. I actually bought mine for only $14. So you guys can save a lot of money. Just go check out scdkey.com. And if you put this code listed on the screen, you can actually get an extra 3% off, which is like 45 cents or something. But still, you're spending $14 on a legit Windows key instead of like 80 bucks. So make sure to check them out, guys. So once you put in the CD key, hit next. And then over here, you're gonna be selecting the operating system that you installed on the USB drive. So in our case, it was Windows 10 Pro. So we're gonna click on Windows 10 Pro and then hit next. Make sure you guys pay attention because by default, it does show up as Windows 10 Home. So if the CD key doesn't match the operating system on the USB drive, it's not gonna activate. So I selected Windows 10 Pro because that's the key we purchased for this build. I'm gonna click on next. So on this screen, make sure you guys are selecting custom install, which is the second option over here. And here is where you have to select what drive you want Windows installed. If you have multiple drives, make sure you're selecting the correct one. But if you have one by default, for example, just an SSD, then select the, then go ahead and hit next. And it will automatically begin installing Windows on the drive. So this part takes a few minutes. So just be patient and let Windows install all the files onto your drive. So after reboot, it's going to take anywhere from 5 to 20 minutes to continue installing the Windows files 
onto your PC. So please be patient and let the computer do its thing. All right, so once you get to the screen, make sure to follow the on-screen prompts and finish setting up Windows. It's gonna ask you what country you're from, if you wanna set up an extra keyboard, all that jazz. So I'm just gonna go through these real quickly. So we currently don't have the drivers for the ethernet port, so we're gonna be using this Wi-Fi stick, which is gonna give me access to our Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna hook this up to the PC. There we go. Obviously, you're gonna need internet access to download the drivers. And if you guys wanna check out the Wi-Fi stick I'm using, I'll drop a link to that down below. Alternatively, you can also use a different computer and download the drivers onto a USB stick and then bring that USB stick, hook it up to your current PC and then just transfer the files and install it that way. You don't technically need internet access as long as you have it on your other PC. All right, so I'm gonna let Windows install everything else on the computer and I'm gonna fast forward to the end where it takes you straight to the desktop. All right, so now that we're here on the desktop, you're going to open up your uh, browser and you're going to be downloading the drives. I'll drop a link to every single drive you would need for this particular system so that way you guys don't have to go to the website yourself. Just click on the link and then download them. All right, so before we install the drivers, what we want to do is flash the BIOS first for improved stability for your PC. So you guys are going to grab any USB with at least 4 gigs of space and you're going to plug this straight to your PC. And then you're gonna to go to the MSI website under service. All right, so under the service tab, we're gonna click on BIOS. And then over here it says AMI BIOS. We're gonna click on the plus sign and we're gonna be downloading the latest version. So release date 5-10-2018. Uh, here's the version number. Depending on when you're watching this video, they might, there might be a newer version. So if there is, make sure to download that one, guys. It's usually on the top. So I'm gonna click on the red arrow and download the file. Okay, and then we're going to open up the zip file, so click on that, open up the folder. We're going to copy the A30 file extension, and we're going to put it inside the USB drive. Just copy and paste. All right, so once the file is transferred successfully, we can close your Windows out, and we're going to go ahead and restart the PC. All right, so after restarting, hit the delete key continuously on your keyboard until you go into BIOS. All right, we're in the BIOS. Uh, down here, make sure you guys locate mFlash on the bottom left corner. Click on that, hit yes, and your PC is gonna reboot. At this point, do not touch anything on the keyboard. Let the PC do its thing. So now we're gonna be entering flash mode. Uh, through here, you guys are gonna have to locate the system file, which should be already on here. As you can see, we can see the uh, A30 file extension. So once you locate that, just click on it and then hit yes. Afterwards, BIOS is gonna be updating, so whatever you do, do not turn off your computer, do not touch the keyboard, and do not remove the USB drive. All right, so once the BIOS update is done, it's gonna restart once again. Don't touch anything on the keyboard, let it boot straight to Windows. All right, so now we're back to the desktop. We're gonna finish installing all the drivers, so open up your browser once again. All right, so the first driver we're gonna install is for the Gravis card. If you're using an NVIDIA GPU, you're gonna have to go on the GeForce Experience website and click on download now. I'll drop a link straight to this website, so all you guys have to do is click on the link and download the driver. So I'm gonna let this download. If you guys are using an AMD GPU, I'll drop a link to the AMD website as well. Next drivers we're gonna install are for the motherboard. So we're gonna go to the X470 Gaming Plus website from MSI, and over here we're gonna be clicking on the driver section. We're gonna select the operating system we're running, which is Windows 10 64-bit. And these are the drives that we're gonna be downloading, so pay attention, guys. We're gonna click on the plus sign next to the onboard audio drivers. We're gonna download the Realtek High Definition Audio Driver. We're gonna go down to System and Chipset Drivers, and we're gonna download the AMD Chipset Driver, which should be the first one. And then scrolling all the way down to LAN Drivers, we're just gonna download the PCI Ethernet Drivers. So total three drivers from the motherboard and one driver for the graphics card. So once all the files are downloaded, just open them up one by one and install them to your PC and you're pretty much done. The next step is to overclock your CPU and GPU, but if you guys don't wanna do that, you are officially finished and you can start downloading your games and enjoy your PC. All right guys, so now we're gonna overclock the CPU and GPU. We'll start off with the CPU first, but before we get to that, we have to download a few programs to help us overclock it. So I'll drop a link to the programs down below there. So go ahead and take this time to install all the files that you guys downloaded. 
All right guys, so I'm gonna show you how to overclock your CPU and graphics card. We're gonna start off with the CPU. So once you're on the desktop, we're gonna go in and restart the PC and we're gonna get into the BIOS. So you're gonna to have to continuously hit the delete key on the keyboard once the screen goes black. All right, so keep hitting the delete key until it gets you into BIOS. All right, over here, we're gonna be going to the overclock settings. Now, by the way, guys, if your uh, menu is different, if it looks like this, make sure to hit F7 to go into the advanced mode. Uh, scroll down, go to overclock. Over here, we're gonna switch the explore mode to expert. And then for the CPU ratio, we're gonna start um, at a very safe clock speed, which is 40. Um, it's gonna be 4.0 gigahertz. And then scrolling down, we're gonna put the XMP profile to profile number two. This is gonna adjust the RAM speed to 2933 megahertz. Anything over that, for some reason, makes the computer unstable. So we're gonna keep it at 2933 for now. I uh, wanna scroll down to CPU core voltage. We're gonna change this to 1.375. And then we're gonna go down to DRAM voltage and change this to 1.35. Now, this is very basic overclock for the CPU. I know for a fact my CPU can go up to 4.1 gigahertz, but for you guys watching this video, it's always recommended to start at a lower number. Uh, these AMD chips can overclock fairly easily, so that's how we're starting at 4.0 gigahertz. You guys can come back later down the line and upgrade this to uh, 41. You can go up to 4.1, you can even do 4.2 if your computer is stable. But just for this tutorial, I'm gonna keep things simple and we're gonna leave it at 4.0 gigahertz. So once the uh, settings are changed, we're gonna hit F10, hit yes, and let the PC reboot. All right, so once we're back on the desktop, you guys can run a quick benchmark just to see if your CPU is stable. I like winning Cinebench R15, and I also like to compare with the original score before the overclock to see kind of how much of a performance gain we got. So I like to open that up, and I like to open up HW Monitor on the side just to take a look at the temperatures of the CPU. So right now it's around 40, 41 degrees. We're gonna hit uh, run on CPU and let it do the benchmark real quick. All right, so the test is done and the system didn't crash, so that's a good sign that the CPU clock is stable. Once again, guys, you can go back and up the frequency so you can go up to 4.1, maybe even 4.2. Now, let's say your system crashes at 4.1 gigahertz after you increase the frequency, then what you guys can do is go back and up the voltage. Uh, make sure to increase the voltage by increments of 0 0.015 volts. You can increase the voltage slowly until you hit a stable clock speed. Now, if your computer keeps crashing, even after adding more voltage, then just keep it at 4.0 gigahertz at 1.375 volts. All right, so now it's time to overclock the GPU. So we're gonna open up MSI Afterburner. It is a free program. I'll drop a link below if you guys want to download it. So we're also gonna open up Heaven Benchmark. This is also a free benchmarking tool. Once again, I'll drop a link down below. We're gonna make sure full screen is checked off. And we're gonna put the resolution to 1920 by 1080 and then hit run. And then we're gonna hit F9 to start the benchmark. So while it's benchmarking, we're gonna open up MSI Afterburner. We're gonna increase the power limit, which is this bar up here, all the way to the max. And then for core clock, we're gonna double click on the zero over here and change the number to 200 megahertz. Once you do that, we're gonna hit the check mark. And then we're gonna go down to memory clock and change this to 400. Once you do that, hit the check mark once again. And I do recommend clicking on this little Windows icon under startup. Basically what this means is it's gonna overclock your GPU every time you start your PC. And you can save your profile. So click on this save icon and then whichever profile you want. So number one, for example, is what I do. And it saves this profile. Again, guys, this is a very simple overclock, uh, but just to make sure your GPU is stable, we're gonna let the benchmark run a few cycles. So one or two times you can run the benchmark and see if your system crashes or not. So you can keep the afterburner overlaying the benchmark while it's running in the background and just keep an eye on the temperature as well. And if you see any stuttering or if the benchmarking itself crashes, then you're gonna have to go back and lower the clock speed. And if that still crashes, you're gonna have to lower the memory clock a little bit. But for this specific GPU, the Zotac 1060, uh, six gigabyte version, I can actually achieve the 200 plus on the core clock and an extra 400 on the memory. I can actually push this to 250 megahertz, but again, just to keep things simple and show you guys how to overclock a GPU, that is the settings we're gonna be using. 
All right, so you guys can see the benchmark is done and we scored 140 for the FPS. And when you compare it to the original score before the overclock, we gained an extra 12 FPS just by overclocking the GPU. So yeah, guys, that pretty much concludes the guide on overclocking your CPU and GPU. If your PC crashes, then it's recommended to go back and lower the settings for both the CPU and GPU until your system becomes stable. Again, do this at your own risk. I don't assume any responsibility if you end up damaging your PC. As I mentioned before, guys, this is the stable base settings for both the CPU and GPU. And if you really want to get a little bit more performance out of your system, you can go back, follow the same guide, but just increase the frequency for both the CPU and GPU. Just keep in mind to increase the voltage as well with the CPU overclock. So that pretty much wraps up the build guide. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If this was at all helpful to you, please drop a like to show your support. And if you didn't enjoy it, feel free to drop a dislike. Uh, thanks again for watching. I will see you guys in the next one.